Hello everybody and welcome back to Mr Chuffy 84. Uh, very very happy Easter to you all. I'm recording this on uh, on Easter Monday of uh, 2021. Um, I hope you're all keeping well. It's uh, the sunshine's amazing outside today. We've had some wonderful Easter weather. As nine, nine times out of ten we seem to have really good weather at Easter and uh, hope you're all keeping well and safe. And um, it's good that uh, soon we'll be able to get back to some sort of normality uh, by the way things are going which is fantastic well today I'm back again uh, as no uh, friend of mine's been asking me if, uh, if I could do some more film reviews and I said absolutely and I did fan Fantasia last time if you haven't had the chance to see that one yet then please do check that out uh, which is on my on my channel here um, and a few other film uh, reviews that I've done uh, over the past year during the pandemic. Well, I'm going to do a film today which has a, a kind of an Easter link uh, with, the, with the title, but I believe also the events of the film uh, also uh, happen on a particular day during the Easter uh, period. So Easter, one of the Easter days, a film so with one of those days in the title. Well, well, I mean, I know you've seen it on the title of the video already, so I don't know why I'm even sort of leaving it hanging. There's no point, because uh, the film I'm going to look at today is uh, regarded as one of the best British films ever made. We're talking about The Long Good Friday, starring Bob Hoskins and uh, Helen Mirren before she became Dame uh, Helen Mirren. Um, I first... Um, read about this film oh, many many years ago when I was when I was a boy it was a, a film guide that I had and there was a, a page about the Long Good Friday with an image of Bob Hoskins in a bloodstained shirt and that image sort of caught my attention I thought to myself this must be a really violent film it's got blood in it you know, remember I was a boy and you know, I thought oh, it must be a really violent film because he's got a bloodstained shirt. But it, it sort of caught my attention and I read it up and I thought it looked interesting. It was an 18th certificate film, so I was too young to see it at that time. So then much, much later on, I found a copy of, um, as with a lot of movies back then, um, when I was younger, I found a, a second-hand copy of it on VHS, which I picked up and I was I was I can't remember how old I was I was well over 18 when I found it and decided to give it a go and read that it was a very good film and so I thought I'll give it a try now I have to say after seeing the film I saw it once on VHS and I think my impression of it at the time was it was good I enjoyed it I thought it was good um, but after a while, I kind of just just forgot about it. I forgot about the film. I didn't really think back about it. The one thing which I think I did that did stay with me was how good the music was. But we'll talk about that in a short while. Uh, but apart from that, I didn't really think much about it. But then a few years ago, I was on holiday, and bum and uh, well bumped into a copy of The Long Good Friday, as you just saw there, on DVD. Um, yeah, I'm going to come out with it. I love going. I, I love going around the charity shops. It's amazing what you can find in in secondhand shops and chari and charity shops, stuff that you've always been looking for, and then all of a sudden you go into a charity shop and wow, there it is, just for a few quid. So I was on holiday and went into one of the charity shops on holiday, and I found this um, like steel book kind of sort of case. Um, edition of the Long Good Friday on DVD, um, two disc edition. Uh, so the film obviously on this one and this two. There's a feature length documentary about the making of the film. Not only that though, and this is what really impressed me. This was three quid second hand. Not only do you get the the uh, sorry, you got the movie on this one. I know it's upside down. The main feature and the bonus features on this there. But also, if I take the booklet out, you also had a copy of, you don't get this very, very often, hardly at all, in DVDs or Blu-rays, you get a copy of the soundtrack album as well. I thought, wow, that is really neat. And it was when I saw the set that I, that I thought to myself, well, I'm really impressed with that. And actually, I wouldn't mind checking this film out again. Because it was, um, 
you know, I just wanted to reacquaint myself with the film. And I'll tell you something, I'm glad that I did because I saw that again with a fresh pair of eyes and I was absolutely blown away by it. Uh, it's a, a very, very well made British movie, uh, gangster movie, uh, directed by John McKenzie. Uh, it's well written, very well directed. Uh, the music uh, was fantastic. I'll come back onto that. The performances uh, and the story is very good and the performances are tremendous in this film. Now, I'm not going to give away any plot spoilers. I'll just read. If you haven't seen The Long Good Friday, I'll just give you a quick synopsis from the DVD. But I'm not going to give anything away because this is a movie where I don't, I don't want to spoil anything. Um, you know, if you've not seen it, I really recommend that you um, see it. There will be a, you know, a couple of warnings with it, but um, I, really, I really recommend it. But I'll just read you the uh, synopsis. So Academy Award nominee Bob Hoskins delivers a ferocious performance as mobster Harold Shand, the all-powerful boss of the London underworld. But on the day he is about to close the ultimate deal with an American crime family, Shand's empire suddenly and literally begins to explode around him. Who would dare attack Britain's most ruthless gangster? How far will he go to find the truth? And what is the deadly secret behind the havoc of the long Good Friday. So why is it called the Long Good Friday? It's because the events of the film uh, take place on a Good Friday. It wasn't originally called the Long Good Friday. It was originally going to be called uh, the uh, Paddy Factor. Uh, that was uh, so. That's what it was known as for the gentleman who wrote the film. But the director, John McKenzie, said that's gonna that it's going to give the game away you know don't i mean i won't say any more than that so you may have already think oh okay so it might be something to do with this but i won't i won't say any more on that but the, the mckenzie uh, john mckenzie the, the director said you can't call this film that it'll give the game away you know and the direct and the writer said no 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 it's a great title absolutely brilliant john mckenzie said no don't like it you know we need to change it and The Long Good Friday was just a working title, but it stuck. And um, and I think it works well. I think it's a it's a good title. So the uh, the story, as we're saying, uh, as you, uh, as you uh, heard there, there was the uh, synopsis. The performances in this film are tremendous. Bob Hoskins as the lead character of Howard Shand. Um, just seeing um, his character throughout this film and how... Everything starts so well in this movie for this character. He's, as, as I just mentioned, he's in the middle of doing this deal with the Americans, but then another sort of group uh, are um, knocking off sort of uh, Harold's uh, colleagues one by one in the background. He doesn't know anything about it. It's all going on in in the background, but but who and why? You know, in the opening sequence, we see this fantastic opening sequence where a briefcase of money is being transported from one place to the other. Uh, you see a widow just walking by and sort of spitting in somebody's face. There are all these little things that go on in the first um, 15 minutes or so. And you're thinking, as a viewer, you're thinking, what on earth is going on? What's this all about? Well, all of those things will be revealed as the film goes along. And that's the that's uh, how good it is in its writing, and um, so and it's, so the story is really good. And I say the performances are tremendous. Bob Hoskins, everything goes well, and then you see his character just completely uh, capitulate uh, as the as the film goes along, and Bob Hoskins is unbelievable in this film and was tailor made for the role of Harold Shand. Um, absolutely amazing. Dame Helen Mirren, who plays uh, Harold Shand's uh, love interest, uh, was originally going to be written as like a gangster's mole type character, blonde bimbo sort of character. And uh, Helen Mirren was not happy with that. She wanted to play a character with a lot more 
uh, intelligence, who's smart, you know, and who can stand up to Harold Shand and support him. And that's exactly, in, and in the end, um, after an, uh, a lot of persuasion from Helen Mirren, and I'm sure support from, from others like Bob Hoskins as, as well, finally the writers relented and they changed the character from being a gangster's mole, typical, a typical gangster's mole, to this very smart and intelligent, as, as Helen Mirren is in real life. Um, the character became a very um, smart and intelligent character and works brilliantly well and there were a couple of scenes as well between Bob Hoskins and Helen Mirren well one in particular uh, which is I think one of the best scenes in the in the film um, which you'll see it comes about uh, towards this so uh, the just out, just after halfway there's a brilliantly played scene between Bob Hoskins and Helen Mirren in their um, in their um, apartment um, about Helen Mirren's sort of uh, telling the Americans the truth of what's going on, why things are going wrong, and Harold Shand tells her, you know, you know, I've been doing my best to to keep things quiet and not tell anybody, you know, and now you've gone and and told the Americans what's going on, um, and it all gets very heated, and then she gets, and then from that she then gets scared and. Bob uh, and Harold Shan uh, consoles her. It's a wonderful scene. And it originally, it was just going to be a lovemaking scene. That's all it was going to be. And Helen Mirren said, no, I don't like the idea of doing a lovemaking scene. Can we do something else? And so she and Bob Hoskins come up with, with this idea. Um, and it works so much better. It works so much better. And it's a wonderful scene. Full of brilliant scenes and memorable scenes. Um, also, uh, a bit of trivia as well, and you'll see him in the film if you haven't already. Pierce Brosnan makes his film debut. Uh, I won't say as what or whatever, but he makes his film debut. It's a largely non-speaking role. Um, appears more so at the beginning of the film and then at the end, with uh, a, a quite a, a famous scene at the very end of the film. But uh, I'll let you watch it if you haven't already done so. But again, you know, it's a it's a, a very good, you know, first performance from him, even though it's a very very small role. Uh, going back to the music with this film, now this music was written by a gentleman named Francis Monkman, who uh, uh, you may not have heard of. I wouldn't be surprised if you haven't. Uh, but if you have, you'll know he was in a, a band, uh, a British band, like it was a, kind of a British supergroup, if you like, back in the late nineteen seventies called Sky. Uh, which, as well as Francis Monkman, who was the keyboardist, synth player, and one of the chief composers in the band, he wrote a lot of the big pieces for the band. Uh, the band also included the world-renowned classical guitarist John Williams. And Francis Monkman was one of the original members of Sky. He stayed with them for a couple of years and then left the band to pursue other projects, The Long Good Friday being one of them. And... Uh, the theme for The Long Good Friday and the incidental music is fantastic. It is It suits the film really well. Um, and it is certainly one of the uh, one of the high points of the film. I mean, there are many, many high points of this film. But uh, Francis Monkman's score is superb. Um, great theme. Uh, the theme which, uh, at the beginning and at the end, and appears throughout the film, and it appears, makes a great appearance as... Harold Shan makes his first appearance in the film when he comes off Concord. You know, it's a great theme, and the music is, um, all the rest of the music too, is really, really good. Um, if you've not seen the film, as I say, it's it's an 18th certificate film. It is a violent film in places. There are a couple of scenes where, if you're a little squeamish, you might... You know, just need to sort of just uh, just be warned. There are a couple of graphically violent scenes in, in this film. Uh, one which is kind of Easter themed, uh, but I won't go into delve into that too much. It's actually one of the scenes. It's probably one of my least favourite scenes actually in the whole film. Um, okay, there's a guy who one of the guys who's targeted gets nailed to a floor. You know, arms outstretched like that is actually. 
you know, yes, it has that so, yeah, Good Friday. You've got the link there, but I don't know. It just doesn't. It, it's one of my least favorite scenes of that of the film for me. Um, the other though, um, which involves uh, a gentleman who went on to be uh, in Casualty. Um, and I can't remember his name. I have to apologise for that because I should have known that before doing the video today. Um, the gentleman who went on to be in Casualty and to be... He's been in the series, I think, from the very start. He plays Harold Shan's sort of confidant. And there's a scene... There's quite a violent scene. I won't say any more about it because it I, don't, I don't want to give anything away. Uh, but there's quite a violent scene involving a broken glass bottle. Um, which is quite... Uh, graphic uh, for its day it was quite graphic but so if you're a bit squeamish you may just want to just be ready for those for those sort of couple of scenes but it is a very good film um, it, the performances as I say are top notch the story is a very good story and it's well shot very well directed well written it is um, as I say very 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 highly recommended if you haven't already seen it okay i'm gonna stop there because uh <laughs> i don't want to <laughs> i don't want to uh, be seen to be rambling too much but uh uh yeah but if you want the soundtrack as well as the film seriously if you can find a copy of this particular edition the two disc with the full length uh making of documentary which is really really good on the second disc and the soundtrack cd then go for the for this particular edition on DVD. I don't know what it's like on Blu-ray. I don't know if it's got the soundtrack with that as well. It'll have the same special features, I'm sure. But yeah, well worth a watch. Okay, so that's Long Good Friday. I hope that has been uh, interesting for you guys. And I will be back soon to do... I did say in my last video I was going to look and i may do this i may do this for the next one actually um uh do a collection of, of films um i'm just finishing at the moment um the lord of the rings tr trilogy just got through the two towers and uh, all the special features with that which has been great fun but it is it's quite time consuming to get through it so i haven't seen the return of the king yet so i'm going to rewatch that soon and then do the whole hobbit lord of the rings thing but one uh, set of films I was going to do, rather than do them individually, I think it's best to do them as a collective, is the Spaghetti Westerns of Sergio Leone, because we lost, very sadly, we lost the composer of those films, uh, Ennio Morricone, just the other year, I think it was last year, um, which made me want to revisit them. So that is the next one I'm going to do. So we're talking about the, the Dollars Trilogy, uh, Fistful of Dollars, for a few dollars more. Um, good, Bad and the Ugly, of course. Uh, Fistful of Dynamite, or Duck You Sucker, depends on which territory yeah, you see it. Um, Once Upon a Time in the West. Um, those So those five. Um, uh, Once Upon a Time in America is not a Spaghetti Western. Obviously, it's a gangster film. I've not seen that. It's just the Spaghetti Westerns by Sergio Leone. So Fistful of Dollars through to... Fistful of Dynamite. Those five films are going to do as one, so I won't go into the stories for each of them because, I mean, the stories are quite slim anyway. Um, but what did I think of them, looking back at them and reappraising them? That's for next time. Anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this one and I will look forward to seeing you again soon. And uh, yeah, please do check out the rest of my reviews on this channel. Hope that they're interesting and I'll see you soon. Okay, take care. God bless and uh, enjoy the rest of your Easter break. Take care. Bye-bye.